We're back today to uh, recommission that LG Multi V5. Um, pulled the gas out of it so they could add an extra head and branch box. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me over the pump. It was, <laughs> that wasn't running the last multi, so it might make filming a bit interesting. But anyway, basically, uh, from my understanding, um, I'm going to need to like readdress this thing. I think you can do like an auto readdress. Um, Obviously, press test. They've got nitro in it now. I'm, I'm hoping they added the, the temperature and all that. You can all just do a quick nitro, like a press test while I'm here. Uh, back it out, get it back up and running. pressure in the system that's good I haven't obviously turned it on or opened up all the valves yet I just wanted to see if there was still pressure I mean to be fair all the valves that should be closed downstairs anyway um, so I am just kind of reading what's in the pipe up to the branch boxes um, but yeah we'll basically we'll get power onto this now so I can readdress it again this is my literally the second time I've worked on an LG v, um, multi v5 or LG in general to be honest a VRF um, so kind of just learning this as I go I had a bit of a read of the manual last night, so I should be able to get into auto addressing. And hopefully we'll be able to use the um, the service dongle that they have to confirm that we're reading all four indoor units now. The mech boys are still downstairs. They're doing a full fit out. Um, other things other than or outside of the aircon spectrum, I guess. But um, I'm gonna get them to turn power on downstairs. Just waiting for a call now. Uh, so <clears throat> they've got pressure in the system. However, I don't know if they had power to the new indoor, if they readdress it or whatever. I, I don't think that's the case. So what, what I might end up doing is we'll get this thing up and running, get power, we will readdress and suss and get see if we can get the, the fourth indoor now to communicate and, and, and basically for this condenser to acknowledge its existence. We'll open up all the valves and we'll do our own separate, our own separate pressure test um, just with the nitro that's in there. Um, got power on now, obviously. Just gonna let that do its thing. Then I'm gonna use the service dongle to see if that new head, like it might automatically address if it's communicating correctly, I don't know. Um, but we will have a look. If it doesn't, if it doesn't log up on the on the uh, service dongle, we will uh, go through the readdressing process. Okay, so <clears throat> that 206, um, I looked up online, I couldn't really find it in the service manual, which is kind of annoying. Um, seems to represent that there's a um, double up on addresses. I'll put the little screen grab up. Um, so I put it into an automatic addressing uh, thing just to see if that would eliminate it. It's come back. So what I think might be happening is potentially the two branch boxes now have the same address. So I had a quick look online that said like there's like a little, there can be like a little toggle in there. That might be my issue. So we'll run downstairs and have a quick look and see if that, uh, if there is a toggle on the board on the new branch box downstairs and the old one as well and see if they're the same. Oh, all right, so branch box number two, the new one. And the old one here. This is a SW01C. It says zero, the other one says zero. So we're gonna change this one to one. Right, so now where I sit is basically what was happening. Um, it was display, so I put it into the, um, what am I trying to say? So through changing that dial on the branch box, I've now separated it so there's no, there won't be basically the two addresses. So what was happening when I put it into addressing mode the first time was it was displaying ID four. So it recognizes there's four heads, but then it comes up with uh, HR one. So it only recognized HR, apparently it was like a heat recovery, the branch box itself. Obviously it was only recognizing one. So that was my problem. 
Now I'm going, I've basically got power after everything. We're going to reset power and I'm going to put it through an auto addressing again. And we should then have uh, communication between everything. So I've waited about three minutes now. So I'm going to go press that SW01C, whatever it is, switch. So this one here, hold it down for five seconds. All right, there we go. Now, now we should start to basically auto address those indoors. Well, that's a good sign. So it's recognizing there are four heads. Next, it should display HR2. Right, so as you can see, there's a bit of a fault code going on there. I looked through it, it said that it's um, like, an, I need to, essentially I can, I need to put this into a back so I can pressure test the new part of the system then I can still back it out. Uh, and that, that referencing like an auto pipe test or some shit like that. I guess it's just like a test mode that I need to do after, but yeah, I can still get it into back mode from this point. So we'll do that. So, left it there for obviously 21 minutes. It's gone up. I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to get this out. I've only got my Schroeder depressors on at the moment, so I'm going to get the core. Once I've released all the pressure, I'm going to take the cores out, get those tools back on, um, and we'll pull it back on this thing, man. Ideal, obviously, that I have to use the quarter inch hoses. Something this big, I'd love to use the Appian back kit, but you know, <laughs> there is just no space there. So, got to do what we can. Um, all right, let's get this thing cranking. So, open, open, let's roll. Just while I'm waiting for this thing to pull down a good vacuum, I thought I'd just quickly go over what a VRV is uh, and why I think they're really cool. Uh, mainly, obviously, for people who don't work in the industry. Um, but I guess to put it simply, just think about, you know, at home you might potentially have like a high wall split or a ducted system. Now that system will have one outdoor unit, one indoor unit. Um, you turn it into heating, it'll heat. You turn it into cooling, it'll cool. Now, this is a commercial premises. Uh, so this particular VRV here is also a heat recovery. So you can just get a straight VRV heat pump, which means that you can have, uh, you know, in the footage previous, I had, I was showing you the branch box I was working on, right? So basically this will have, um, or this one in particular, right? Has three pipes going from your outdoor to your branch box. And from there, it'll send um, refrigerant to your indoors, okay? Now you can just get that in a heat, heat pump, which is basically works exactly the same as your uh, high wall split at home or your ducted system at home. Um, it can only heat or cool at one time. Now this is a heat recovery. So what that means is it can actually heat or cool at any given time. Um, so being a commercial premises, it's usually, um, you know, some people might be hot, some people might be cold. So in one particular area, you can have the system in cooling and one other area you might have it in heating, right? Uh, it does that through a whole bunch of valves. Um, the branch box as well comes into play. Um, this one has, like I said, has three pipes. Um, I think Mitzi are the only one that can do what uh, are doing it with two pipes, which is really cool. Their branch box is way more complicated, but very, very cool. 
Um, but yeah, so that's basically what a VRV is. So in the commercial space, they're, they're really, really popular. Um, like I said, for the fact that you can heat or cool at any given time. Uh, but yeah, it does mean they're a bit harder to work on, but once you do start working on them, they're, they're really cool. Notice I've stalled out a bit. Um, it's hovering around that 1100 mark, so we'll do a uh, we'll do a sweep with nitro. I'm only trying to get up to a 50 kPa. Right, I'll let that sit for five minutes and then we'll put it back on back. process would be a lot quicker if there was room for me to put the appy on back kit in there. Eh? <laughs> so I've just taken it off back now. I'm just gonna let that sit for a bit, make sure that it um, doesn't rise too much, but uh, yeah, honestly, at this point, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we will get this all set up and purged, and we'll get ready to charge uh, charge our gas from here into the into the line set before opening up the valves, putting it through its pipe run test, whatever. And then I've got to add an extra like kilo and a bit or something for the extra head and branch box. About 10 minutes, it's gone up what 10, 15 microns. So pretty happy with that. We'll get this thing out of back mode and charge up. Purged up to there. Just going to tear this off again. Beautiful. I'm going to go down the liquid. And I can make mine back up as well. So, close, close, open. Alright, I'll stop and roll. So it's stalled out at about 9.5 kilos. So in the meantime, I've also taken off, I've uh, put the Schroeder cores back in and put these back on, um, just so I can get this board back in place because if I'm gonna do a pipe run test, I'm just gonna have to put the cover on and I just wanted to make it way easier for myself later on as well. Less pressure, yada yada. Anyway, well, um, yeah, I'll, I'll put up the screen for what I found. 
Uh, that's basically what I'm going to do. Also, sorry if I'm yelling because I'm, I'm wearing uh, earmuffs to block out the noise of the pump, so it's kind of hard to gauge the sound of my own voice at this point. Um, anyway, let's jump in. Right, so <coughs> we're fired up, compressors running, fans are running. Um, obviously, I got my uh, lines around the wrong way, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, so I'm still, I'm still only putting 9.5. So it was 11.4 in there. I've got to add another kilo and a bis. I'll get the proper number in a minute. Um, but I'm going to let it do its test first. It says it can take anywhere between um, five to 30 minutes, depending on how many indoors. So we only have four indoors here, so hopefully it won't take that long. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, I'm just going to let this happen, uh, let this run, and then once it completes it, we will start it up in cooling, add the rest of the gas and then we will put it through its paces, I guess. I reckon that's probably a good sign. Um, yeah, we'll wait for that, for that to stop flashing. I'm gonna try to get this thing into cooling now. I've had a quick look at the service manual. I'm assuming there's a way you can put it into like, I don't know, like additional refrigerant or like forced cooling or something like that, but at the moment I can't find it. Um, I'll have a better look if I can't get this thing to run in cooling. Seems like, because we were running it in a, in a test in heating mode just before, uh, some of the space is a little bit hot. So hopefully we'll be able to get it to run and add the extra gas in there. Okay, the presser's just turned on. No, fans haven't turned on yet. All right. Getting in there. The compressor's just chugging, chugging along the way, so. Keep going in. So I've cheated it a bit. All I've done is I've basically put it back into that pipe test mode. And I used the other sensor that I didn't use the last time, which apparently means it's gonna go into cooling now. So uh, yeah, that, now I'm gonna charge that way. <laughs> uh, right, we've got. So <clears throat> I was struggling to get any, well, where is it, out of that one. So now I've got to add an extra 900 grams that I couldn't get out of that, plus the extra 1.7, so 2.6, and then we're sweet. Well, I can hear that they're working, um, but they've turned the lights off on me, so I have no idea where the fuck they are. How <laughs> do I turn the lights on in this place, eh? Hey? Oh, shit. Yes, yeah, so they, they haven't hooked up the ductwork up there yet, so that's why it sounds so loud. Anyway, this is our other indoor here. Um, just ticking along, that's nice. Um, and our branch boxes are over here. So that was the existing branch box. That's a new branch box. I've just got to jump up and close them up now. Um, and then, sounds like that fan's wrapping down actually, so it might be done through its test mode once we get up there. Heard the valves open. The fan turned on for a sec, so we'll just wait to see if this turns on and then we'll turn it off. Definitely get a fan now. And this is the thermostat for the new one, so I'm gonna turn, oh, Jesus. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> um, beautiful, so that's off. Let's just pop upstairs and make sure that condenser is shut down and then we'll pack up and get out of here. Sweet, that is me done for this one. Just gonna pack up the rest of my gear and get out of here.